All right, now that we got it uncapped on both sides, we're going to walk over to the centrifuge and uh, put it in. I've had this thing about 10 years and uh, lock it in place. So again, this, this all came from Brushy Mountain Beef Farm. There we go. All right, we got nine of these and we'll have to extract them just by turning them like so. Okay. And uh, our honey goes through the bottom. We catch it in the bucket here. I got a five gallon paint strainer in these buckets. When the bucket gets full, I just pour it into another bucket and that's how we do it. We just store our honey in five gallon buckets and put them in the back room storage. And that's how we do it. We don't pasteurize anything. All we do is strain it, you know. And it'll keep for years. Yeah, it doesn't have to be refrigerated. It's best if you don't refrigerate it. And it's definitely like fresh honey. And it always, you know, keeps a long time. If I do have some in the winter time, then maybe it gets too cold. I have a little heat band that I put around the bucket and plug it in and it'll heat it up to you know, 100 degrees or so and keeps it from, from turning to sugar. And that happens very seldom, but sometimes it happens. So uh, Here's an example of one rack that wasn't filled out all the way. But it's okay because it's capped. If it's not capped, you want to leave it because it's going to be too thin. But you can just uh, you know, uncap this and put it in. Now to make your centrifuge run right, you're going to be sure you don't have a whole bunch of full racks on one side and a whole bunch of empty ones on the other. So you sort of got to balance out your, your centrifuge so to make it spin evenly. All right, here's our wooden rack again. All right, these are the plastic uh, frames that I put in here. I've used these because it helps me combat wax moths. Wax moths fly in here, lay eggs, and they eat wax, and they'll just devastate your hives. But they can't eat that plastic. But this is a heavy sheet of plastic that's covered with wax. The bees get this, and they draw it out. And you can see right here where they've drawn, started to draw it out a little more and a little more. And they're slowly filling these things up full of honey. You can see the honey shining in there. And when they get all the moisture out of it and get the content right, then they'll cap it off, all right? Now, if you ever pull one of these out and there's a whole sheet of this that's uncapped, you want to leave it because the, the moisture content will be too high and it's not good honey. You need to leave it and let them finish. But this little bit won't hurt a thing. We're going to uncap all this and extract it. I've already uncapped this side, okay? But it's just one they hadn't quite finished drawing out. When I'll just, when I, when I get done slinging the honey out of it this afternoon or tomorrow, I'll go put it back on their boxes and let them finish uh, using it. If I had it to do over again, I would probably buy an extractor with a motor on it because as much honey as we do, Standing there spinning that thing takes a little while, but uh, I just never have, never did. Okay. All right, here's a bowl of stuff that we just cut away from the bottom of some of these racks. The bees will fill up these boxes, and when the racks are full, they'll just stick it in every little corner, every little nook and cranny. And I like to build my boxes, like I said, out there. I like to build my, some of my boxes deeper. And so there's leaves a, a runner. They'll just add to the bottom of those racks. You can take a butcher knife and cut it off. And when you cut it in two, it fits right in a uh, quart mason jar. So you can put two of those in a mason jar and then top it off with honey. And like, that's what we use for our medicine. Now some of this honey will be real light colored. Some of it's dark. It depends on uh, what they're getting. Now we live out here in a rural area. There's a lot of poplar trees, but I have no idea of no one. They range as far as eight miles. They're just collecting what they can. I like the dark honey. It, it always seems to be richer, but uh, you just cut you off a piece and eat it. And there's a few bees in here, you see right here. Just pick them out, okay? Pick them out, throw them away. You can squeeze this by hand and strain it, or you can put it in a jar, like I say, and, and do it that way. But uh, just be careful, don't get stung. You know, I think this whole bucket has four little bees in it, so it's no big deal. And uh, that's what we do. It tastes very good. Just don't eat too much to make yourself sick. All right, next thing we're gonna do is extract. I got the extractor full. Well, you don't wanna eat the wax, you know, you just chew it like chewing gum. And you can chew it a long time and then you can spit it out or save it with all your other wax. When Once you get all the honey out of it, you can wash that stuff, clean it up real good, melt it down into cakes and it has many uses. Okay, our centrifuge here is full of, uh, this, this is the least full rack that we had. Some of these are just half full. We'll see how it rides. I tried to balance it. And it does much better and much smoother once you get a couple gallons of honey sitting in the bottom of it. You can see it's rocking right now pretty bad. So you may have to readjust your racks. But we're just gonna go nice and slow and steady to start with. And uh, you can see the honey sticking to the inside of the centrifuge now. You can hear it slinging against there, just threads of it.
All right, you can see the honey sticking to the side of the centrifuge, and we're just slowly letting it take off. You can spin um, these centrifuges so fast and so hard that you will sling the foundation out of the wooden racks, so be careful not to overdo it. You spin it one way for a while, then you can stop and go back the other way, and you'll watch it. Eventually, it'll, it'll be completely free of honey, and you can take it out. Uh, this stuff tastes so good. I'll tell you, we love to take uh, some of this fresh honey, and uh, we got a few cows that we milk, make fresh butter, and it puts you a blob of butter on a plate, and pour honey over it, and mix it all up to a little cream with some fresh biscuits, and then it's hard to beat. I don't think kings eat that good. Uh, one thing you'll have to do before you start is prepare your, your, your bee room, our kitchen, because this stuff will get all over the place. While you're walking around, in and out, you've got honey and comb stuck to the bottom of your shoes, and it just makes a mess in your floor. So we put, uh, we save a lot of old sheets or rags or towels or drop cloth and we put down, because we, like I said, we do this over a two or three day period, and it just saves our floor. When the cleanup comes, it makes it a lot easier. There's a lot of studies that we've read about uh, antibacterial qualities of honey. And uh, you know, there's reports where it actually is good on wound healing, and uh, we use it that way. We've experimented on ourselves, and you know, I, you can't legally make any claims of that sort of thing, but we believe in it. I believe you can look up uh, Google honey and wound healing, and uh, there's studies on some types of honey from certain plants, you know, that the FDA has already approved for wound healing. But uh, you know, I don't think they've done studies on our honey, but uh, we believe in it, and it's good stuff. It tastes good. I'm not a health nut by any means. We just like to eat good. If it didn't taste good, if it wasn't good, I wouldn't be doing it. All right, we brought the, the honey in the house. We got our hot knife out. We uncapped it. We put it in our centrifuge, and we slung it out. Okay, the racks are empty. Now the final product is right here. So unscrew the cap, and there it is. Now we got our paint strainer. We'll pull this out, and whatever bits and pieces of wax are left in, we'll be, we'll be taken out with that. And that's the finished product. All right, there's all our hard work, filtered and ready to eat.